Soviet друзья! G'day guys, welcome to another Soviet lens review. Today I've got a pretty awesome lens to check out. This is a Soviet lens that has two apertures. So let's get into it. Okay guys, so today we are going to be taking a look at this. This is the Jupiter 38 or Jupiter 38 Vorsim. And it is one of the best Soviet lenses I have ever used. Not only that, it is an experimental Soviet lens and we're gonna find out why. Uh, so starting off with this lens's history, this lens was originally made for the Selena police camera as an experimental sort of uh, police camera for the Soviet traffic police in the early 90s. And they had this Jupiter 38, which is a 75mm f4 lens, and additionally the Jupiter 39 uh, that came with the camera, which is a 135mm f5.6 lens. But this Jupiter 38, again, was specifically made for the purpose of taking photos of uh, number plates, of you know speeders, of criminals, by the tra uh, Soviet traffic police back in the day, which is pretty interesting. And what that means is that this lens has a particular few design influences or characteristics which show up that most other Soviet lenses just do not have, including a, a double sort of diaphragm or double aperture that was created to effectively make this lens a little bit more resistant to backlight. Back in the day, of course, you can imagine that if you're taking a uh, photo of a speeding car and, you know, the sun's behind it, then you want your lens to, uh, you know, not completely lose all contrast when there's a bit of backlight in the frame. And that's exactly what uh, the Soviets have tried to achieve in this design. Now, you can tell by the logo on the lens there that this lens was made in the Belomo plant. Um, and the serial number there, N1076, uh, because it's only a four-digit serial, that gives away that it is actually a experimental prototype lens. Now the reason that the Jupiter 38 is an experimental lens, it never made it to serial production effectively because uh, the lens and the system itself, the Selena camera that the Soviet traffic police, you know, tested out in the early 90s, it just never took on. They found it a little bit hard to use. Outside of that, uh, a little bit more history on the lens and some tech specs. So this lens has five glass elements uh, in a sonar design. Uh, as you can tell from the Jupiter moniker there, uh, many Soviet Jupiters uh, had the sonar optical scan in them and that is also uh, you know pretty important because sonar optical scheme we know it's a pretty good optical scheme and it can produce some very sharp images and that is one of the best characteristics of the Jupiter 38. But aside from that, this lens does go from an aperture of f4 through to f22. It has a minimum focusing distance of one meter and a uh, aperture that has 12 blades. So you're gonna get some very circular bokeh, uh, no matter what aperture you have stopped down to. It is also a clickless aperture, but not that well placed. And that leads me on to ergonomics. So this lens, it does have an M42 mount first up, but this is not a standard M42 mount. Remember, it was made for the Selena police camera. And what that means is that when you're trying to adapt it to a regular M42 adapter, like I have here, my M42 to Nikon Z adapter, um, the flange of the adapter will actually catch on the edge of the lens. So make sure that when you're adapting it, you know, keep that in mind that a flanged M42 adapter is not gonna work. Um, I I had to use a uh, M42 to uh, PK adapter, then PK to, uh, to Nikon Z. Bit of a complex process. But aside from that, in terms of ergonomics, I love the focus ring on the Jupiter 38. Of course, it's all metal. It's all, all metal and glass, and the focus ring is super, super smooth. It is just a joy to focus, particularly on a modern mirrorless camera. The aperture ring is not too nice. It doesn't have any clicks, and it's at the very front of the lens. The closest aperture ring, which I would liken it to, is that of the Indostar 52, which is, yeah, not too nice. One other interesting part about this lens's aperture is that even when it's fully open, you will still see the aperture blades. Uh, that is not a defect of the lens. That is just part of its design due to the fact that, again, it has a kind of pre-aperture before the actual aperture that's always set at a uh, specific value to help against backlight. In terms of the lens's optical characteristics, of course, that is very important. Now, 
It has extremely good optical characteristics. I was so surprised when I picked up this lens, got outside, took a few photos with it, uh, just to see how sharp this lens is first off. You know, right in the center of the frame, right from f4, but particularly at f5.6, this lens is razor sharp. And I actually did a few tests and put the uh, test images into an algorithm that I developed, similar to modern focus peaking algorithms in modern digital cameras. And uh, what that showed is that actually f5.6 to f8 is where you want to be shooting this lens for maximum sharpness. And that is pretty uncommon within a Soviet lens. And it just shows you just how sharp this lens is uh, relatively, uh, relatively wide open, effectively only stop down one stop. Now it does sharpen up at the corners at around about f8, f11. Um, although yeah, that center sharpness at 5.6 is a real uh, strong feature of the Jupiter 38. Now, in terms of contrast, it has fantastic contrast uh, throughout the frame as well. Um, it is a super punchy lens. It looks modern uh, on modern digital cameras. I shoot it on my Nikon Z6. You can see in a few photos here just how punchy the photos that come from this uh, Jupiter 38R. And as well as that, it does not suffer too much from chromatic aberration, very well corrected there. There's a little bit of longitudinal chromatic aberration in out of focus areas, but uh, really all in all, it is not a lens that you can notice, you know, any kind of lateral aberration, aka fringing in, uh, very well corrected for that. And yeah, it really does not have too many negative characteristics to it. Um, aside from, I guess, the very high, relatively high minimum focusing distance of one meter. Uh, but when it comes to bokeh, if you can, uh, you know, get a little bit of separation between your foreground and your background, you are going to be rewarded with the Jupiter 38. The bokeh that it produces is really in my top five. Uh, of all Soviet lenses, of all lenses that I own, it is plasticky, it separates the background so, so nicely, it's very, very circular, thanks to those 12 aperture blades. I'm not entirely sure why they put 12 aperture blades in a police lens, who knows, but uh, I'm thankful for it because you are going to get some beautiful bokeh uh, with this lens. And color as well, the colors that come out of the Jupiter 38, uh, again, perfectly modern, for a lens produced in 19 uh, in the in the early 1990s, uh, they are very impressive and maybe a touch to the warm side, but really nothing uh, egregious or, or or nothing bad at all. And vignetting wise, um, it doesn't really have too much vignetting either. A touch wide open, but uh, when you stop it down a little bit, you are going to be rewarded with a pretty crisp, uh, you know, chromatic aberration free almost image that just looks fantastic. As well as that, the depth of field of this lens is something to talk about because a 75 mil lens, of course, not a very common focal length. And one of the benefits of 75 mil is that you can get a very big, very wide depth of field. And so you can see on the depth of field scale here on the lens, for instance, if, you know, if you're focusing to uh, f at four meters while you're wide open at f4, this lens is actually gonna be in focus from about 3.8 to five meters, which is a pretty you know long depth of field, which can be very nice if you're using this lens for video. And I think if you're a videographer and you need a 75 mil lens and you want something with a little bit of character, beautiful bokeh and good depth of field, then I mean, this is the lens for you. And of course, because it's 75 mil as well, uh, there really aren't too many uh, distortions visible in the lens in terms of pin cushion or barrel distortion. That's a characteristic uh, kind of synonymous amongst uh, that focal range. This is one of the sharpest, one of the most contrasty and one of the just nicest Soviet lenses I have ever come across. And the fact that it's so hard to find information on the Jupiter 38 is crazy because uh, once people know about this lens, then it is going to be flying out the door. 75 mil admittedly is a little bit of a weird focal length, you know, kind of, you can use it for portraits if you want. Um, but again, at that F4 aperture, maybe you'd want something a little bit, um, a little bit faster than that. But when you pick up this lens, I did for less than 200 US dollars, which in my mind was an absolute steal for a lens like this, uh, you will see for yourself just how nice it is to use. So I'm very impressed and uh, credit to Belomo because this is my first Belomo lens that I have reviewed as well. They made a absolute banger here.
Uh, but for now though, guys, that has been it for today's review. Remember, give this a like, here, give me a subscribe as well. You know, let me know what you liked about, uh, well, what you like about your 70 or 75 mil lenses. And if there's any other lenses that you want to see me review, let me know down below. But until the next time, that's been it for today. I'll see you then.